Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and welcome to St. Paul's Church on this Sunday, June 28th. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. <clears throat> o God, you direct our lives by your grace and your words of justice and mercy reshape our world. Mold us into people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we look today's lesson, I ask you, if you're looking at this at home, to uh, read Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 1 to 17. You get more of the full story of what I'm about to preach on. Okay, what has happened? Jeremiah is going to the people of uh, Israel, of Jerusalem, and told them Bab uh, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonians is going to overrun the nation, going to take them into captivity. God's, this is uh, God's punishment to them for having violated his way. And this is going to go on for some years. And to make the point, Jeremiah is told to make this wooden yoke to wear. Okay, like, like he's in captivity. I, this stole is symbolic for me of a yoke. I'm yoked and hooked to Christ, okay? It's a symbol. So Jeremiah is wearing this yoke. He goes into the temple. There's another prophet by the name of Hananiah. Now I'm just going to read part of Jeremiah 28, this part of the story. Here's what happens. And the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of priests and the people who are standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessel, the house of the Lord, and all the exiles. Okay. What Jeremiah is saying, Hananiah said, it's not going to last forever. This, this uh, captivity is going to be in two years and it's going to be all done and it's going to be finished and things will be fine. Jeremiah is saying, amen, so be it. I, I like that. I agree with that. However, it's going to last for years and years and years and years, okay? Jeremiah says, listen, the prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times, they prophesied war, famine, pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word that comes from the prophet comes true, it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. So, Hananiah, if you're saying two years and that happens, you're the prophet. However, if it goes on and on for years, as I've been saying, I'm the prophet. So there's tension here. It's either or. Either Hananiah or Jeremiah. Jeremiah's not saying one's wrong, one's right. He's saying, this is, this is what God said. Let's see what happens. Now, Hananiah, here's where it crosses over a little bit. They're in the temple. Hananiah gets mad at Jeremiah. He takes the stone and just throws it, breaks it in two, shatters it on the floor. And Jeremiah turns around and slugs him in the face. And the church is fighting and they're beating each no. up. Jeremiah quietly leaves the temple. Just leave. Doesn't say, he didn't say his peace. So Hananiah has broken this wooden yoke, okay? So God intervenes again, Jeremiah. This time he makes an iron yoke. And I, well, that's, you're not going to break that and smash that on the floor, are you? So he goes back into the temple. He goes back into the temple. And he has a word of the Lord that this is going to go on and on and on, this captivity. It's not just a year or two. And he tells Hananiah, within a year... You'll die because you countered the Lord. Whoa, this is big stuff here, folks. Take the yoke. It is given by God. It becomes a spiritual symbol. And Hananiah has taken that and broken it. It's a physical thing, a yoke. It's a spiritual symbol that points to what God wants. And he's cast it down and broken it. Either or, you know, who's... How do you determine who's right here? One way to do that is to get on our knees and pray. You no know, church, they were uh, struggling along and there's, they decided that they're meeting, how, how are we going to get people in here? What are we going to do to outreach? And suddenly it divided into two parties. The first party wanted to fix the building up really nice and, and this attractive building would just pull people in. The other group wanted to go out into the community to witness and be missions to them. The first group won. They fixed up the building. The second group did not leave. They stayed. They stayed. 
They didn't fight, you know, they stayed. They stayed. The first group, eventually, that didn't work. But because they stayed together, they came together. And they worked and they got out into the community. And the ministry was hard. I'm not saying the church really grew thousands of people. But they got out. In other words, they didn't fight and argue. They did not break the body of Christ. And that's exactly what Hananiah did by denying what Jeremiah said. So, I'm calling us to prayer in our missions and ministry, okay? I'm calling us to get on our knees and remember when we pray. Take the Lord's Prayer at the beginning. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your will be done. Not mine, not yours. God's will be done. When we pray, we've got to keep that in mind. We've got to keep the work together as the body of Christ. Hananiah kind of broke that. And eventually he dies. And eventually Jeremiah is right. Captivity happens, the nation falls apart, and it's for years and years and years under Nebuchadnezzar, okay? So Jeremiah is proven to be the right prophet. It could have worked better. I mean, Jeremiah said to Hananiah, after Hananiah said, it's only going to last a year or so, and Jeremiah says, hey, man, so be it. I'd love that to happen. It would be wonderful if it did. But if it doesn't, this is going to be the way it is, and we'll know who the true prophet is by the way it turns out. Hananiah didn't like that, and it broke the body of Christ. We do the same. We break the body of Christ all the time and calling us to prayer, to working together as the people of God. I don't know the future. God does. But let us be his people, no matter who we are, where we are, be people of prayer, discerning God's will. And remember in the end, God's will be done. Amen. God's blessings upon you. Next week, a reminder. We'll celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord cover you with his love and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.